Hi everybody, I'm Jared Pike. This is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, January 7th. On today's show, we learn how gardening can be a positive benefit for your health. David Pavey previews a joint venture between the Village Church and the Shell Point Academy. And we'll get a what's cooking recipe for a simple but extremely tasty snack you can make anytime. But first, today is the big event. It's gigantic. It's enormous. It's ginormous. It's the LifeQuest Expo. This free event showcases all of Shell Point's health services and programs, as well as local businesses that can help you and achieve your LifeQuest goals, be they physical, spiritual, environmental, community and social, and more. There are more than 50 booths to tour and numerous giveaways, door prizes, refreshments, and many other good things. The LifeQuest Expo is open to all, and it happens from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the church auditorium. LifeQuest is all about improving your own wellness, perhaps in ways you hadn't thought of before. For example, did you know that gardening is actually good exercise? Not only do you enjoy the outdoors, but you also enjoy the accomplishment of a successful planting and socializing with your fellow gardeners. You can learn how to garden for your health at tomorrow's Garden Society meeting, happening tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the Woodlands Oak Room. Here is a preview. The Shell Point Garden Society started about four years ago when Sue Moore said to me, you know we need a garden club. And Shell Point made it really easy for us to start a garden club. There's much to learn about Florida gardening. A lot of people, especially new people down here, are used to gardening up north, but it's a whole different experience down here. Different plants, different kind of soil, different um, acidity in the soil. Um, it just is a very different experience down here, so there is a lot to learn. I was a Virginia gardener, and um, I was used to planting in April and harvesting before the middle of October. So that was my planting schedule. And I was used to clay soil where you had to add lots of peat moss, and we even added sand in Virginia. <laughs> so here we had to learn how to deal with porous soil where you have to fertilize a lot and we didn't need to add any sand in Florida. So garden lovers, if you're a garden lover, we hope you will consider coming to our meetings and we want everybody to feel included whether you're an actual gardener with dirt under your nails or not. It's on a Wednesday. Our meetings are always the first Wednesday of the month. January is exciting because uh, we have never talked about gardening for your health. For your physical health, um, Melanie and Christine and Michelle. Uh, Melanie and Christine are from the physical therapy department and of course Michelle Smith is, uh, works with Shell Point um, Fitness. So uh, they're going to talk about uh, how to uh, prepare yourself for gardening and how gardening can help you um, your physical body health. And how to weed without killing yourself. That's right. We don't, we don't want any pain from gardening. I think gardening is wonderful because it's one of the very few things that we can control. There's so much of my life that I don't seem to be able to control. But in my garden, I'm it. If I don't like it, I tear it out. If I like it, I develop it and maybe share it with somebody else. Plants are exciting and they're wonderful. You can also improve your physical and mental health by trying Tai Chi, or more specifically, a simplified version called Tai Chi Cha. Bev Chanley teaches this class which consists of gentle movements and very little memorization. The class begins this afternoon at 4.15 in the Island Health Club, so sign up today. What if your 2014 LifeQuest goals are more spiritual in nature? 
When you retire, you have a lot of time to ponder the universe and your place in it. If you feel you need a refresher on the basic aspects of the Christian faith, there's a program just for you. It's called Alpha. This combination of dinner, video lecture, and discussion is facilitated by the Village Church and begins next Tuesday, January 14th. Our Terry Kolath sat down with David Pavey to learn more about Alpha. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath, and I'm here today with David Pavey of, of Coquina, and we're talking about the Alpha course and what it means to our opportunities to look at our own spirituality at this stage of our lives. Thank you for joining me, David. It's a pleasure. I shared with you that I was reading my daily reading for the faith that I'm a part of, and it said that faith, people of the faith I am, are about the most spiritually content people around. And that kind of hit me right between the eyes. That said, if we're the most spiritually content people, does that mean we're not working to be more spiritual? Isn't that what we should be doing? Well, exactly. I, I like to see us as on a continuum. Mm -hmm. We don't arrive on a plateau, but we're always learning. We're moving. And uh, our desire in Alpha is to help people in that process. And, and the way you do it in Alpha is extremely unique. I loved taking the Alpha course a year back. I just thought it was a fabulous thing to do, to really look at my, my beliefs and my own spirituality. But you do it starting with, the, it, it, you're all a big group of people. What do you do first thing? Well, we're about 60 people, and the first thing we do is eat. <laughs> That's always a great way to start. That's a great way. We used to charge for this, and, and now uh, we offer it to people as a ministry. We just feel it's, Alpha is that important. Mm -hmm. And you know, people say there's no such thing as a free lunch, but this <laughs> is a free lunch because although the church underwrites the program, there's no hook in it. We don't need to do that. We're not trying to recruit people for the village church, but to help them on their journey of spirituality. In fact, that's one of the reasons why the Academy is so proud to include the Alpha course starting this semester, because with our Life Quest program here at Shell Point, we're looking at the dimensions of wellness, and the spiritual dimension of wellness is right right up there at the top with what we're looking at. Exactly. I walk around the island every morning because I've been told that, in fact, the Bible itself says that, that physical exercise is good for you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I, I look in the windows when the lights are on and I see people in there having their morning devotions, as I think you do and, and I certainly do. And uh, you realize, yes, we're moving. And uh, so it's great, Alpha is great to introduce new people mm -hmm. to the faith or to help them to make progress in it. So it's a, it's a refresher course for some. Uh -huh. It's a whole new discovery for others. It certainly is. And I love that you start with Nikki Gumbel. What of Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity Brumpton Church in London, an right. Anglican vicar. What a, what a presence he has. He's an amazing man, really. He, he, his father was a, a refugee from Nazi Germany, yeah. Jewish. And uh, he did studies at Oxford and at Cambridge. And during the process of, of that, becoming a lawyer, he, uh, he discovered the Bible and started to read and to read. And through reading the Bible, his life was changed, and so he's devoted himself to, to Alpha. So he gives us a lecture, which we show by video, uh -huh. after the meal. So that's the second phase of the evening. Uh -huh. And Alpha. the third phase I like the best. Well, the third phase, yes, it's, it's a small group, uh, normally 10 or 11 people. Uh -huh. We have a leader in you there. You break up into small groups. Yeah, we break up. We have a number of them scattered throughout the building in the woodlands there. And uh, so under the, uh, uh, with the help of a leader, people then talk about the lecture and about their own journey and they ask questions and, and there's a lot of sharing. So the leader is a facilitator rather than a teacher. It's not dogmatic. I love how Dr. Sue Stranahan explains that, you know, we may or may not be religious people, but we're all spiritual people. Absolutely. If we know it or not, yeah. if we accept it or not. So why not take an advantage of an opportunity to explore that spirituality? Exactly. We've had one or two people say to us, I'm this denomination or that denomination, so I'm all right. In other words, I, I, I'm, I, I'm here, uh -huh. but we're all on a journey, as yeah, I said. I'm content, yeah. as I was reading. Yeah, that's yeah. where we started. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. 
No, uh, good to think that way. Very exciting. And what a community to live in where we not only have the village church, which means so much to so many of us, but we also have the village church offering these opportunities to explore. Well, we think it's really important. This is the 11th time we've done it. So we do it once every year, and every year there's a full house. And we run for about 10 weeks. We end the middle of March. So it's not an all-year commitment. It's just these few weeks. And, you know, one of the neat things is that some really deep friendships form oh, for sure. in these small groups. Mm -hmm. and, and since it is, I mean, it's wonderful to think of a free dinner. It's wonderful to think of getting to know friends and neighbors. But it's a, it's a commitment because you share with each other. It's a commitment. You know, think about if you can, can stay with us from January 4th. 14th to March 11th. Absolutely. That's taking the Alpha course. Yes. And that's what we're looking Absolutely. for. So we ask questions like, why did Jesus have to die? And why should I read my Bible? Why should I pray? And how? And does God guide us today? All kinds of practical elements to do with the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. It's really quite exciting. <laughs> it is. Thank you so much for talking with me about it today, and I know you're so instrumental in helping to offer it to Shell Point. Thank you. So if you have not already, you're, you're to call the Village Church. That's where you can register and sign up for this gift from the Village Church to the community of Shell Point called the Alpha Course. Coming up, we have a what's cooking recipe from Gaz Goslin. It's a simple recipe, but one that will win you friends and confidants if they try it. It's barbecue cashews. Coming up next on What's Cooking. Hello, my name is Ruth Duber, and I have a guest with me again today, Gaz Goslin. He has another one for entertaining that is mighty delicious because I just tried some. So, Gaz, it's all up to you. You take over. Thank you. Uh, these are barbecued cashews. They have a little bit of a bite, but not overwhelming. Very simple recipe. You melt your butter, which is two tablespoons. And once your butter is melted, you turn off the heat and add the following ingredients. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now the recipe calls for white Worcestershire. I never have white Worcestershire in the house, so I just use the darker. Two tablespoons. The next ingredients is one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of soy sauce. Next is one teaspoon of Tabasco. That's what gives the bite. During cooking class, many years ago, the teacher told me never ever to measure anything over <laughs> your ingredients because if you put too much you can't take it out. And the last ingredient is a half a teaspoon of salt. A half a teaspoon of salt. Mix all of your ingredients keeping in mind that the stove is turned off. Stir it well so they're all melded together. Once that's done, you measure out two cups of cashews. The container happens to Hold two cups so I don't need to measure. And pour the liquids over your cashews. And thoroughly mix the liquids 
make sure all of the cashews are well coated. Don't be alarmed if there's extra liquid in the bottom of the bowl. That's normal. Once that's thoroughly mixed, pour it into a cookie sheet that's been lined with foil. Spread your mixture evenly over your cookie sheet. And then it goes into the oven. You bake it at 225 degrees for 15 to 30 minutes. Once they're placed in the oven, every five minutes you're to stir them so they brown evenly. And once they are cooked and finished, you lay them out on paper towels to drain. Here is the finished product, and it's wonderful. I've been eating them while he's been cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are yeah, wonderful. They are good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you keep them in the refrigerator? Uh, no, actually I put them in an airtight container. Okay. And mm -hmm. I suppose you could freeze them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that would you work. Could, you can do regular nets that way. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. wonderful. Thank you guys. They're You're delicious. Welcome. We'll put it up on the website. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. It's time now to cover all of today's happenings from Resort Services. Then, after your Academy News and Menus, Stay tuned for Village Church Connections. Hi everybody, it's Tuesday, January 7th, and I'm Bev Chandley, and this is Leslie Brand, and we're going to go over today's activities with you. We're going to start out bright and early down at the Health Club with the Health Connections class, Bend, Breathe, and Balance. Eight o'clock's the time the round robin men's doubles tennis will be played down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. At 8.15, we have the stamp ministry. They'll be in the stamp room down in the tunnel. At 8.30, bocce will be played at the bocce court at the Woodlands. At 8.30, the Ladies Golf Association will be at the Shell Point Golf Club. And you'll find the caregiver support group and memory care group at 9.15 on the second floor of the rehab center. At 9.15, there's open painting. That'll be down in the art studio. 9.30, match play mixed doubles tennis will be at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. At 10 o'clock until 2 o'clock, the Life Quest Expo will be at the Village Church. Make sure you get down there. And then at 10.15, we have Through the Bible, Bible Study Group in the Osprey Room. 10.30, Caregiver Support Group and Memory Care Group will meet on the second floor of the Rehab Center. Our last morning activity is 11 o'clock where the Suzy Q will head off to Rum Runners for lunch. You do need to sign up for that one. Here's Leslie for your afternoon. Well, Bev, at 1230, we have the Mixed Progressive Bridge in the game room. 115 is the Knitters Group in the Osprey Room. Shuffleboard is also at 115 at the Shuffleboard Courts. And lastly, at 115 is the Rollicking Recorderist in the Tarpon Room. Stamp Ministries at 1.30 in the Sable Room. And we have a Health Connections Balance and Training Level 2 in the Health Club at 2.45, but it is full. 4.15, we have a Health Connections Tai Teacher in the Health Club on the island. Sign up is required. And at 6.45, we're gonna end the day with Him Sing in the Resident Activity Center. Thank you all for tuning in with us today, and we hope you have a healthy and happy day. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy information for Tuesday, January 7th. At 9.15, Pottery Throwing on the Wheel begins in the Pottery Studio of the Island for those who have signed up. At 10 o'clock, Ancient Egypt New Discoveries will take place in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands, and you can sign up right at the door. At 1 o'clock, A Tale of Two Cities, Session 1, begins in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands for those who have signed up. Also at 1 o'clock, a Life Review Reminiscence class will begin in the Buttonwood Room of the Woodlands and sign up is required. At 1.15, Where Did That File Go? will take place in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. Please sign up at either service desk. And at 1.15, Pottery, Throwing on the Wheel, 
begins again in the pottery studio on the island for those who have signed up. Tomorrow, we have some new classes for you. Susan Willoughby begins intermediate bridge sessions. And Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve will begin a life figure drawing course. Richard Nelson of Lakewood will begin computer college prep school. Menus for Tuesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is petite strip steak with duchess potatoes and asparagus. The dinner special is the build your own stir fry bar for $11.95. And the soup of the day is country cabbage. In the Island Cafe for lunch, enjoy a Philly cheese steak panini with chips for $7.25. For dinner, the special is fried chicken with red potatoes and steamed carrots for $8.25. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Tuesday are snapper for $17.95 or grilled scallops for $18.95. Um, these are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Greetings and welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm here with our senior pastor, Pastor Andy Hawkins. And Andy, we are going to be talking today about something that perhaps people have begun to hear a little bit about, and we want to explain it just a little further. And that something is called Refresh and Renew. Well, uh, if, if people have uh, come into the church in uh, the last couple of years in the auditorium, they've already noticed some changes. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the, there's been a, a, a pretty substantial renovation of the restrooms. And in addition to that, then we've remodeled the, the lobby area, which is obvious when people come in and really has uh, been a remarkable change that I think has been important. But uh, those are simply indications that our facility in general has needed uh, an upgrade and uh, a refreshment in a lot of different ways. And uh, now we're ready to dive into the major part of uh, this whole renovation project, which really started a couple of years ago. And that involves the renovation of our sanctuary area. Area, the auditorium area. It'll involve uh, certainly some cosmetic refreshments, uh, new carpet and chairs and painting and those kinds of things, but it'll also involve some other things, a major lighting upgrade for the house lighting, and in addition to that, uh, we'll have a, sort of a new front uh, of the back of the stage area, uh, so uh, providing an important focal point, not only for the church activities, but also for shell point activities. So there are some significant, uh, not only appearance kinds of changes that are in store for the for the village church and for the auditorium but also some very important functional changes that I think will make uh, the whole experience uh, that we have not only in worship on Sundays uh, but also for the events that take place which are certainly many in uh, in the Shell Point retirement community uh, to be much more helpful and functional so we're going to do a major overhaul really in the coming year uh, to accomplish that. And that overhaul will also extend into the hospitality room in the chapel. That's correct. Uh, it will take care of some of the offices upstairs. Uh, we'll be doing some work in the kitchen as well. If, That's right. If anybody, anybody has been in our kitchen, they realize that it's not very functional. Yeah. And that, so this will be a major improvement all the way around. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, we can't do a lot of things to the kitchen because of uh, code issues, but there are a lot of things that we can do to make uh, the hospitality ministries and functions that we have in the the Shell Point community a uh, much more effective. Yeah. The Village Church has taken on this project, and I know we've had a lot of conversation even at the governing board level about how we want to approach this project, and they have some very purposeful thoughts and intent with this. Share a little bit about their heart. The Village Church really wants to make uh, this renovation the gift of the Village Church to the Shell Point retirement community. Mm -hmm. uh, we realize, for instance, that uh, this is a multi-use facility. The Village Church uses it uh, substantially, but it's also used by the Village Church for uh, meetings and the gala performances and uh, all the Shell Point uh, community concerts. There are a lot of things that are used by the Shell Point community, and so this is not just the facility that, that the church uses, although it is the home of the Village Church. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we want to be a blessing to this community. And as a result, the fundraising for the, uh, the renovations that we're calling Refresh and Renew are being done in and by the church. And we're not making appeals outside of the church uh, because we really do want this to be a special blessing of the church uh, to the Shell Point retirement community. 
And I've really appreciated that as I've listened to those conversations go on. I know that there's a special meaning behind the Refresh and Renew name for this campaign, too. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, obviously, the facility needs to be refreshed. But at the same time, uh, we're a church, and the church is a spiritual body. It's not uh, really a, a building, and it's about the people that are involved. And so for us to uh, engage in a project of this magnitude, which is substantial, uh, it will, in fact, require that uh, we are changed as well, mm -hmm. that we're renewed spiritually spiritually, that we're, we're, we can be the people that God wants us to be. And so we're engaged in Refresh and Renew, and we're desiring that not only would the building demonstrate the kinds of qualities and characteristics that we've come to expect in Shell Point and the quality that we've come to expect in Shell Point, but we also have come to expect that uh, God will change us, change His people to make us into His image so that we can be the people that, that He wants us to be. And then the church will be functioning the way the church is supposed to function. That's great. We anticipate that our costs are going to run us about a million dollars. That's correct. And that's been the goal that we've targeted to raise. We're well on the way to raising that money, and it's been such a blessing to just begin to watch that come in as people step up and participate with this project. We are looking forward to a celebration Sunday on February the 9th. Mm -hmm. Why that date? Well, that date is important for a couple of reasons. Anytime you're engaged in a fundraising activity like this, I think it's important to have a target date, uh, to know that uh, this is the time in which people need to have spent some time in prayer, and we have been spending time in prayer, and I think it's important to recognize that, but there's, it's good to have an end date, knowing that this is the time in which we need to, uh, to be able to, to recognize that I'm committed to this project in this way. In addition to that, we want to do the bulk of the work in the summer. <laughs> And that's obvious uh, because uh, less, lots of le less people are here in the summer, and this is the time it really needs to happen so that it doesn't conflict with too many of the Shell Point activities. In order for that to happen, then we have to make sure that uh, bids uh, are established for the various uh, parts of the project and uh, that the permitting is done. And unless we can uh, get started on that in February and March, uh, we won't be able to start on May 1st, for instance, in the major part of the sanctuary construction. Uh, or the renovation. So it's important that uh, that date is, uh, is a wonderful opportunity for celebration. And as you said, I think we're well on the way uh, toward raising the money, uh, and we're, we're just expecting uh, and trusting the Lord that that will be a glorious day of celebration Absolutely. on February 9. Thank you, Andy. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us today for Village Church Connections. There are exciting things happening at the Village Church. Perhaps you've heard a little bit about Refresh and Renew, and we hope this gave you a little more information. Have a wonderful day. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we learn how urology can be a very different discussion topic for men and women. We'll also talk with Sally Rich, who will soon be showcasing her beautiful photographs of great blue herons. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, January 7th. I'm Jared Pike, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.